forget to like and subscribe. And hit the notification bell. So we can go to college and get, get more, more knowledge. Shibu Shiba Inu. The Shiba Inu. The joke, meme, ridiculous cryptocurrency says the World Economic Forum wants to work with the project, get this, to help shape the metaverse. <laughs> oh. That's just mechanistically what's going on. So as a mechanic who is looking at next year and the year after and where we are in that thing, I'm just saying it's, it, it's undesirable. And the unimaginable is becoming increasingly probable. Oh, oh, good news. Wow, I didn't even know this. So it's not just Shibu Inu, but it's also uh, Facebook that is partnering with the World Economic Forum and something called Decentra Land. What an ironic title there. I hope they're not implying decentralization. <laughs> that would be, uh, wow, would that be Orwellian? This is just complete peak clown world that's the best way i can describe it we, we have to be at peak clown world right now as i'm doing this video because it cannot get any more insane than this i think that's the main take i'll just wait until tomorrow you say yeah. this uh, sad i know week. i know i always say it and then tomorrow i we just Go even further down the clown world rabbit hole. But, um, we have to go one step further. We have to have a strategic mood. We have to construct the world of tomorrow. It's a systemic transformation of the world. So we have to define how the world should look like, which we want to come out of this transformation period. Earlier, we have the great narrative of so-called globalization. Yeah. And everybody believe in it, and everybody think this is our shared future. Now, as the world is changing, we need to reshape again the vision, as you just said. But how to bring everybody on board? So is now the opinion uh, globalization has failed, and we are entering into an era of deglobalization. I think that's wrong. Uh, we, of course, we have the reshaping of certain supply chains. So for certain physical goods, we may see much more uh, reshoring or home shoring. In reality, uh, the world has moved closer together because um, uh, we, we are moving from a physical world much more in a digital world. And the digital world by nature is much more globally oriented. Mm. Now you asked how to do it. Yes. I think it needs uh, what we feel in the World Economic Forum, a multi-stakeholder approach. It's certainly uh, governments who have to be in the lead, but uh, business, most of the solutions will come through innovation from business and we have to integrate the large population. We have to um, mentor mm -hmm. the population and to show through our good examples that um, uh, the future requires this change mm -hmm. and the change at the end ultimately mm -hmm. will be beneficial for them. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Alex Wallace. I run uh, content at Yahoo. I have a question for Ray. Looking at historical precedent, what do you think the likelihood of a civil war in the United States is? I, th I think that, I'll, I'll, I'll first define a civil war. Um, I think that it's reasonably probable that no side will accept losing in now, what is that probability? I don't know. You could, maybe it's 50%, maybe it's even more than that. Um, I don't know. Um, 
That, I think it's probable, or there's uncomfortably high probability, that directions from the central government, rule of law and the Constitution, won't be, won't, may not be followed. Supreme Court rulings may not be followed because individual states say that I'm not going to do that. It's like sanctuary cities. They say I will not follow. I think what's happening now is that there is a movement uh, from one state to another with, due to changing values and, and changing, that's producing a hollowing out in some states. And when that happens, because the rich move someplace or the ideologies are the same, it produces a hollowing out in other locations. You're seeing that in New York and Chicago, San Francisco and other places. That exacerbates the gap. It exacerbates not only the wealth gap, but it uh, exacerbates the ideological gap. And then when you get to that rule of law and respect and compromise don't exist, then you deal with power, and it becomes a power decision. And I think we're seeing this more and more, like uh, Disney's um, issue with the state of Florida. You know, in, a, in the world mostly that I grew up in, it would be that they would respect they have different views and you respect it. It becomes a power thing. State of, Connect, uh, state of Texas might not have Citibank uh, fl uh, issue the bonds and so on. And it becomes more and more that kind of conflict. So it becomes a power thing. I think that's developing in that kind of a movement in that direction. That's a very scary thing because when you don't have rule of law or you start to have fighting, uh, it's a different world. I think you, you, there are signs of that and, and history has shown, history has shown through times that when there are these uh, populism of the left and populism of the right, a populist is an individual who will fight for you. And so for each of the sides. And when they say, I'm going to fight for you, uh, they will fight to win and there's no compromise. And so when you have that, there's, his history shows us that there's a loss of the middle. You can't be in the middle. You have to pick a side and fight on that side. So you could see in the French Revolution and the Russian Revolution and the Cuban and the Chinese and so many others, uh, they lose the middle because you have to pick a side. And the way it's resolved is that there's a conflict, a war, and who has the power? So I think that these things are emerging.